And perhaps most importantly, it is the one-year anniversary of the murder of 11 men. And the... I'm not sure murder is quite the right word, but something awful close to it, of one of the uh, biologically richest and diverse and healthiest and vital parts of the American coastline, the uh, manslaughter, perhaps, except it's not man, uh, ecocide is probably a decent word, of the, of the, uh, of the Gulf Coast. Dar Jamail is with us. Dar, D-A-H-R-J-A-M-A-I-L dot org is his website. He's been following this story from the very beginning. He's been on our program a number of times. Dar, welcome back. Good to be with you, Tom. It's, it's always great to have you on. You are so good in your reporting. Uh, your latest article, uh, BP's Criminal Negligence Exposed. I'm assuming there's a link to it at darjamail dot org. Actually, it's up on english.aljazeera.net right now. Okay, great. english.aljazeera.net. Okay, great. And uh, tell us about the, the Gulf a year later. Well, the Gulf is uh, it's a disaster zone. The four main states uh, most heavily affected by this disaster that started uh, one year ago today, that would be Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida, uh, are still suffering uh, human health impact, uh, marine and biological health impact, and, and severe economic impact from these. Uh, meanwhile, we have uh, uh, BP paid uh, Kenneth Feinberg, the so-called independent uh, uh, administrator of the GCCF, uh, the $20 billion compensation fund, has paid out to date uh, less than $4 billion of the so-called $20 billion compensation fund of course, we have to remember that it was just the end of last December that Feinberg boasted on Bloomberg News that he expected to not have to pay out more than half of that fund, therefore saving BP, his employer, who pays him and his firm $1 million a month to so-called administer this fund. Uh, he's going to be saving them a good chunk of that money. $10 billion. Didn't BP right. just get a $10 billion tax uh, write down because of their expenses on cleanup? Well, exactly, and that's how they're doing it. In fact, I've seen some reports that show BP could well, if they play their books the right way on this, they could actually profit from this disaster. Wow. By gaming the tax code so that basically you and I and every other taxpayer in America pays for the cleanup. Exactly. Of course, coupled with the uh, continued increasing uh, price of oil, which, of course, is, is helping them very much. But we're seeing right. uh, continued devastation. I, I think some of the key points of this story as we go into the future are we're facing a decades-long impact and recovery period on the, the ecosystems of the Gulf, uh, as you mentioned, which are uh, ext- were, anyway, an extremely uh, biologically rich area. Uh, much of our fishing, uh, shrimp, and oyster production for the United States I would say comes, but I would say now came from that area, uh, that's going to be severely impacted in the human health crisis, where we're literally seeing deaths that are already being directly attributed to chemical toxification from BP's disaster. For example? Uh, for example, uh, I, I did a piece not too long ago. Of, uh, I interviewed a man named Stephen Aguanaga from Louisiana, and he and his friend Merrick Belaine went swimming in July off the coast of Florida and dove under the water and came up both covered in this kind of orangey, slick, chemical substance, uh, and then immediately started feeling lousy. Uh, to date, Stephen's been, uh, had his blood tested. He has such high levels of the chemicals uh, in his blood, all directly attributed to uh, BP's crude oil and dispersants used to sink it. Uh, such high levels, the doctor basically was wondering how he managed to actually walk into the office. And exactly one month after the day they were exposed to these chemicals, his friend Merrick drop dead. Wow. And, and these, these can't be isolated incidents? Not at all. I also have spoken recently with Dr. Mike Robichaud in Louisiana, who said he's been treating uh, scores of people coming in, all with the same symptoms, uh, t- uh, doing blood tests on them as well, finding the same chemicals, uh, things like toluene, MP, xylene, benzene, things like this. Now, these are the all- high fractions of oil, by and large. They're the chemicals that are contained in oil, right? Exactly, that and some of which that are also uh, contained in the toxic dispersants that were used to sink it. So right. uh, this is a, a huge public health crisis, and Dr. Robichaud said short of anything uh, less than a, a massive immediate federal intervention to test people and start taking care of their health problems, he said we're going to be looking at a lot of bodies piling up. Is there, to the best of your knowledge, any... Um 
will for a massive, this massive federal intervention you're talking about? Absolutely not. Instead, we see Obama and his uh, Interior Secretary, Kenneth, uh, I almost said Feinberg, uh, um, um, but his, his uh, in, in, Interior uh, Secretary, Kenneth Salazar, right. who are pushing full steam ahead with deep water exploration. In fact, uh, uh, just this year, we've seen uh, Salazar give the go-ahead for uh, more exploration wells being drilled in almost 3,000 feet of water, uh, despite the fact that Salazar himself has uh, pending lawsuits against him filed by the Center for Biological Diversity, the Gulf Restoration Network, NRDC, and the Sierra Club, just to name a few. Uh, this man has countless lawsuits by these environmental groups because they see him as being absolutely complicit in the uh, uh, unbridled support the Obama administration is giving the petrochemical industry. Wow. Um, and it's not just the Obama administration. I mean, John Boehner was out yesterday, I believe, criticizing President Obama for not opening enough places for drilling. This is this is a, um, you know, if anything, by the Republican standards, the, our Democratic president and his administration are taking baby steps. Right, and I think that's being very diplomatic of you to even put it uh, uh, that way. Yeah, it's full steam ahead. It's total insanity. And yet, uh, one thing I do want to note, note, given that this is the anniversary and it's been nothing but bad news from the Gulf to date, uh, you know, I have recently reported on a bit of some pushback and some good news where uh, the environmental organizations I just mentioned are all filing these massive lawsuits. Uh, the Center for Biological Diversity is actually suing BP for $19 billion under the Clean Water Act. And if they win, they fully intend to use that money solely for Gulf restoration. Wow. I also want to mention there's a law firm uh, called Brent Coonan Associates that's representing more than 5,000 people across the Gulf trying to get their claims settled with BP. And he's very outspoken and said, we're taking them to the mat for this. We want full restitu restitution and reparations. And he also went on to say, and I, I think this really sums it up, that this is from a lawyer uh, who sued BP successfully in the past and said after, after representing thousands of people among the years made sick and who've actually, many of them, been killed by this industry. He said that he sees this as an industry that does not mind killing people uh, as being simply part of the cost of their doing business and that unless these people are criminally prosecuted and, and brought to the mat in that way to court by the federal government, he sees uh, nothing that is going to change this full steam ahead for the oil industry. Yeah, I think Shell demonstrated that for us in, in Nigeria. We have saw it. A friend of mine was actually murdered in Ecuador protesting the uh, oil, oil line through there. Um, it's... Uh, it's a grim industry. It's a grim industry. Dar, we have just, just one minute left. What can the average American do about this? Well, I, I think for, for starters, supporting groups like Center for Biological Diversity and Gulf Restoration Network and NRDC is a good way to go. Uh, and I think most importantly is do not let this story die. Write letters to the editor. Uh, put pressure on your local and national news services. Ask them why are they not staying on this story when there's all kinds of proof of contaminated seafood sick human beings and the devastation to the, the uh, ecology there that we have to keep this story in the news. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Dar Jamail, uh, D-A-H-R-J-A-M-A-I-L dot org, his website and the, the current article, BP's Criminal Negligence Exposed, is, is over at where, Dar? Uh, English.aljazeera.net. Thank you very much. Dar, thanks so much for joining us today.